Hello guys, welcome to another ReactJS tutorial for beginners. In this video, we are going to learn one of the things that some people find very confusing when working with React. And that thing is how to dynamically add or remove attributes in our JSX. What that means is this. Let me give you a quick example. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm making use of a form. This is the form. It has only two fields, the username and the first name. Now, talking about the attributes, let's assume that this form, we need username to be required. We simply say required here. When I try to submit the form, we get this little validation here saying that the field is required. But when I remove the required attributes, I can submit the form. By the way, this form submit is handled by this function here. It basically grabs all the inputs in the form and do a console.log of it. Nothing more than that. Now our goal is that in the first example, we see how to handle those attributes that do not necessarily need to be assigned to something like required, read only, etc. Then after that, we look at how to handle things like this name, username, type, text, etc. that we have the attribute name and then a value assigned to it. In the first example, what we want is that this field should be required or not required depending on certain situations, certain conditions. So how do we go about to conditionally add or remove attributes? There are different ways to do this, but we are going to look at three, or should I say two examples. So depending on the situation, you can pick which one is most suitable. For that, let's look at another way we can add this required field. We are going to demonstrate another field later. I mean required attribute. So another way we can add required attribute is by saying true. This is equivalent to what we had before. If I come over here and try to submit the form, we get the same validation like before. And if I inspect this element, inspect the element. So you can see the input element here. It has the attribute required without the equality sign or setting it to true or whatever. But when I come over here and I set this to false, this is equivalent to removing the required attribute entirely. So if I come over here, you can see that that required attribute is gone. That means we can use a Boolean to either require, either include this attribute or remove it entirely. So that's our first solution. For that, I have this, this variable here, some condition, which is a Boolean, either true or false. So we can use this kind of condition, a Boolean variable, to either add or remove this kind of attribute. Now, this kind of condition could be coming from a database or from um, Ajax request or whatever. But for our example, we have it here. I will copy the variable and come here and replace whatever that was hard coded with that variable. Initially, the value of some condition is false. That means the field will not be required. So the required goes away once again. But I have this little helper here, a button that when I click on it, it toggles some condition to true, to false, to true, to false, back and forth, right? That is this button here, just so that we can see the different scenarios when it is true and when it is false. So I'll go ahead and try to submit our form, no issues. But when I toggle the condition to true, 
you can see that automatically this field becomes required. Now when I try to submit the form again, we get the validation. I will toggle it to false. When I try to submit the form, no issues. What we have done for required, we can do for other fields such as read only. Read only, we put some, whatever the condition is. Now let's look at how to handle things like ID equals username. That is when we have the name and we must have a value assigned to it. The solution is actually straightforward. I'm going to paste the first solution here. We're going to look at another one. So this is like passing an object with a spread syntax. What is going to happen here is that if this condition is met, let me first comment out this ID here because that is what I'm using here. So if this condition is met, this attribute name and value will be inserted just like we had it before. Otherwise, we're just passing an empty object. So this will be added or removed entirely depending on whether or not this condition is met. Let's see what that looks like in the, in the browser. So in the first case, we have ID username because some condition is still truthy. If I click on this button to change it to false, you can see that automatically the ID attribute name and value disappears. If I toggle it again, it is back and toggle it again, it is gone. Now, what if we want to do this for multiple attributes? For example, for type, text, name, username, ID, whatever, etc. We can go ahead and copy this as many times as needed. But there is another way we can approach something like this, and that might be more convenient depending on your use case. For that, I'm going to undo all this and I'm going to comment out everything we have here. Let me bring in an object here. Once again, this could be something that is managed by your state management or coming from other sources, but permit me to hard code for this example. So this is simple. I'm going to copy the object and come over here. We use some kind of spread syntax. I will paste what I've copied. So we spread out the attributes, the key and value we have in the object, and it is converted to our attribute name and the values. If I save this, let me inspect the input field. Right now, you can see that we have all those attributes spread. So we have disabled name and ID. According to what we have here, disabled name and ID. You will notice that we also have required and type. Required is false and like before, we don't have it here. And then type is undefined, so it is totally removed. It is equivalent to not having type at all in that object. To bring in type, we can do something like type text and now we have the type text. So this is another way we can dynamically add or remove item from our element. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of this lesson. We have seen the two, or should I say three different ways of dynamically adding or removing item from the element. And I hope that makes sense. See you next time.